Aggie, a win on the opening day, just how you planned it. Yeah, never in doubt. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, crazy, crazy game. Um, we thought we'd keep with the Worthing tradition of winning games 4-3. Uh, but no, it was, it was um, to be honest, that was all about the players that second half. It was, a, you know, it was easy to say at half time that it's still, still plenty in the game left for us. Um, and uh, for them to have performed the way they did second half was, was superb. But then we did feel even at half time that there was enough in the first half from what we saw that you know, we got in some really good positions. We just need to move the ball a bit quicker, take less touches. It was really basic as it sounds. We needed to play one, two, three touch, make the ball do the work, move the ball fast, and then get runs ahead of the ball. Um, and as I said, it, you know, three 0 down at half time. I thought we got in some really good positions. Had the lion's share of possession. Probably had the better opportunities, um, even at half time. So, but again, it's easy to say that. At half time, and there's plenty left in the game. It's, it's the, the players that have gone out and done it. So fantastic, from, fantastic from them. I've never seen a, a game of two halves exemplified as much as it was there. What was the message at half time to the lads? I know. Um, we spoke about a couple of things tactically, but nothing groundbreak, uh, groundbreaking at all. Excuse me. It was again just move the ball quicker. Um, we felt their shape. Um, uh, it wasn't really causing us problems. We, we felt it was more around us not doing what we can do really well. Um, you know, our, we felt our plan A was right. We just need to do it better. Um, I mean, we kept, as I said in the first half, we got in some really good positions. We just, when we did uh, get the ball between the lines, we then took 85 touches and allowed them to recover and get back goal side. Where second half, we just played a little bit quicker. And, and um, in terms of tactically, it was a couple of tweaks second half, but nothing, as I said, nothing groundbreaking at all. Something that has to be commended is the substitutes that you made on the hour mark and, and afterwards as well. I just, yeah, bold, bold to subs bringing off the skipper. Yeah. Um, just talk us through that decision. Uh, we just felt we needed um, a bit more threat in behind. Um, so Joel and Starks are two, they both play the same position, but they both play the role very differently. And we just felt that where the game was stretched and, you know, we had an awful lot of possession of the ball today, first and second half, and we just felt that if we could put a bit more energy in forward areas and our centre defend space in behind a little bit more, um, it would cause them problems. Obviously, Nicky's come on um, and had an equally as positive impact as, as Starks. And I thought young Harrison, who come on, was superb. Um, held it up very well, linked play really well. I thought him, Cash and Spongy um, combined together really well. Uh, and then obviously Ollie Black at the end with with the throw. Um, I just I just said to the lads after the game, I said that one thing I did like was Glenn, Joel, uh, and Hutch all had the right arm coming off, um, which is great because it shows they're desperate to be out there. You know they're not hiding; they they want to be out there. They want to be fighting for Worthing, which is great. But I think also credit to the lads that come on in terms of they were ready. There was no sulking. I was obviously disappointed because they want to play, but come on and we're ready to make an impact and Ollie Black's come on in 85 minutes and has set up the winning goal so you know it's a real testament to the lads and their mentality and um, their attitude towards putting the team first. Something we haven't touched on as well and I'm not sure many of the supporters know this but you were serving the first of a three match mm, ban yeah, today yeah. Um, how was it for you watching that from the from the stands? Uh, well, apart from having a row with about uh, five of Western's directors <laughs> it was um, it was alright um, no obviously you're kicking every ball um, but you know, that's, the, that's the benefit of having brilliant staff with Azra, Dino and, and BC uh, in the dugout. You know, they're, they're superb and to be honest, if we keep winning, I'll just stay in the stand and let them crack on. So, you know, it's, uh, it's not ideal, but equally, you know, like I said, we're surrounded by really, really, really capable people who have um, played a key role in us getting the points today. And a quick word on uh, Danny Cashman and Jack Spong as well today, the yeah. goal scorers. I know you've spoken all the way through pre-season yeah. about how important they are, how, yeah. how good they are on your yeah. side. Yeah, just a quick word to say. Yeah, no, I pieces. mean, I was going to I was gonna try and work a way to mention them in the interview if we didn't speak about it, but I mean, it's, they're class. You know, they're, you know, there's a reason we've spoke so highly of them. And we did feel that when there's three points up for grabs, you know, they'll come alive and obviously Spongy scored two free kicks today. Um, and Cash, obviously he'll get credit for the goals, but I think he was involved in everything that we've done well today. Um, so in terms of like, the expectation we have on Cash, Spongy, um, I mean, Tommy Willard as well deserves a lot of credit because he's done an awful lot of running off the ball today and 
got in some great positions, and <clears throat> um, you know I, th I thought uh, they were they were superb, and you know, they rightly so get ahead of a lot of uh, credit. But again, it's not just that like, off the ball they worked hard. I, I felt that even at even at three 0 down, you could see they're, they're desperate to work and desperate to do the hard miles. Um, so yeah, you know they really epitomised um, our comeback today. And then looking ahead next week, now that sets you up. You've got five more away games until you return or, or start effectively for yourself at home. Yeah. Um, Hamel coming up, uh, St Albans coming up next, yeah. sorry, pardon me. Um, yeah. yeah, looking ahead to that one, what are your thoughts? No, I'm not looking ahead to it at all, <laughs> to be honest. I'm going to get back on the coach. I'll probably be out for two days after that. No, um, yeah, no, we, we've, we've watched St Albans and uh, Hemel and, and Truro, and you know, we'll, it'll just be. A repeat of what we've done this week. You know, we've, you know, how can we, how can we keep developing the way that we play? How can we hurt them and also acknowledge what they're, what they're good at and try and, try and negate that. So yeah, it'd just be, we've got to enjoy this though. No, we do have to enjoy it. I mean, I, I got myself in a space, at a previous club where I, I didn't really enjoy the wins because it was just you almost sort of took it for granted because we were so successful and I, I think coming away from first in management for a couple of years and coming back into it, I've made a conscious effort to really enjoy it. So I'll probably be out till about five. <laughs> well, yeah, enjoy so that I'll see one. my wife on Sunday. <laughs> enjoy that one. Thanks, Eggie. Yeah, uh, thank you.